Quinny, welcome to the channel. In this video today, we're going to be looking at the squad depth for Celtic and some of the latest transfer rumours that have been coming around. A few of them are quite close to home, so we've got some interesting insight on all of that. As well as that, I'll be kind of diving into where I think the manager's headspace is with the squad depth and exactly where the key areas will be strengthened in the summer and how many more links and transfers we're likely to see in the sort of time frame I think all this is going to be actioned in at any point in the video today guys if you do laugh you learn you like something or whatever please do like and subscribe share retweet all that good stuff guys stay out of trouble and let's get stuck into it if you could hit the subscribe button i do daily global football content everything from wonder kids and rising star managers to fantasy football and watch alongs that will also automatically enter you into my april giveaway a rare new season edition mls cup champion anton tinnerholm and two limited goalkeepers if you want to stick around to the end of the video we'll get into all the giveaway stuff again there now first of all we need to think about where the manager sees the team in terms of strength depth and versatility the managers made it quite clear that a lot of the players in the front line and the front three are going to be relatively interchangeable and we've seen little elements of that in midfield this season and early in the season we've seen how willing he was to play like near Beton in different positions also. So the manager's definitely not above rotating players into out of position situations or whatever but he definitely seems to have a formulaic first 11 and second 11 that he likes to rotate between in terms of minutes and strength of opponent in different tactical situations. As of end of the season, this is the way I believe the manager views the depth in the squad. Now, unfortunately, we don't have so rare cards yet for Juranovic, O'Reilly or Giacomacchus, so I had to do my best to kind of Photoshop him <laughs> as best as I could, so thanks for uh, bearing with me on that. But we've basically got roughly about two to each position. Now, where Idiguchi came on in the last game of the season like, leads me to believe Ange sees Idiguchi as being O'Reilly's understudy next season and I think it's quite obvious the situation we've got in the tandem with Hitate and Turnbull. Same with the whole front three, we've seen the wholesale changes and this has been what it is. With Forrest getting a new contract also, it does lend itself to, him, to the manager believing he is capable of being one of the backup wingers on the left or on the right, whatever it might be. Now, you might be raising your eyebrows at James McCarthy behind Callum McGregor here. I believe the manager potentially sees James McCarthy as an option in a worst case scenario to be the understudy to McGregor. Bearing in mind that McGregor does play 90 minutes over 95% of matches and start and you know, will feature in 95% of matches period. Um, it wouldn't be too much of a burden to put on James McCarthy because realistically he is only going to play the very bottom of the table, the cup games that are against the low end division, um, the low division uh, opponents. And maybe the manager has faith in him to do that, along with guys like Stephen Welsh. Maybe the manager doesn't have James McCarthy really in his plans and he believes that Idiguchi is actually going to be the understudy to Callum McGregor. Maybe they'll rotate a little bit more and maybe when he does maybe bring on Idiguchi for O'Reilly, actually McGregor will play that role as a secondary option tactically. But this is where I think we stand. And the first transfer we had come in, I, I dropped a video about it the other day, is Francesco Ortega, the left back from... Argentina, Vela Sarsfield. I managed to get him in a game week. Uh, he only picked up 42 points before multiplier. So it wasn't uh, anything amazing, certainly, but he's done his part and maybe he'll get a little debut reward for me. And I think, you know, when you look at the, the strength here in depth, the key areas to look at is left back, centre back, and somewhere in midfield. It's definitely a um, space for improvement, no doubt. So beyond Ortega, we've now recently been linked to two centre-backs. First of all, Ko Itakura. Now, we were actually linked to Ko Itakura last season. He turned us down to go to Schalke in Bundesliga 2. It doesn't seem like they have the funds to complete that transfer. I also believe there are Bundesliga clubs interested in Ko Itakura, as well as Benfica are now uh, apparently hotly in the race for Francesco Ortega also. So these transfers do come with a premium, but also with the Takura links. We've also had links to Taylor, Harwood, Bellis, the England under 21 international captain, I think, as well. THB has had a, a really good season, it must be said. He didn't play as many minutes as I think he would have expected or wanted to, but he played really good for Anderlecht when he was in the team and he was getting minutes. He didn't really seem to gel with Vincent Company or some sort of behind the, behind the scenes decision was taken about his playing time. I think Anderlecht signed a few more defenders on a permanent basis and didn't want to accommodate a loan signing really. 
So Taylor Harvey Bellis was dropped and sent to Stoke on loan and predominantly played left side of a back three. He's a left-footed centre-back, which I think is exactly what we need here. And by all accounts, and you know, I, I watched his, his progress throughout the season quite closely, of course, he did pretty well for Stoke and Stoke were really low down in the division when he came in and towards the end of the season they finished in a much better position as a result of good performances and other such as well, but he was a big part of their defensive contribution. With us having Champions League football, I think THB, and I'm very biased in this of course, but I think he should be the number one target that we go for to really push Starfelt and really try and improve and upgrade. So I'm going to assume that we get Harwood Bellis, we get Ortega, let's say, and then if you look at this, the obvious place to then try and upgrade is in midfield somewhere, whether it be uh, upgrading above James McCarthy or Idiguchi, or maybe even trying to test out O'Reilly. But I think it probably would be in that number six position to really upgrade uh, behind Callum McGregor and then really take the burden off of using James McCarthy in any serious com competitive situation if something terrible was to happen and you're required to use your second string in a first string situation. But the problem is with upgrading in that position properly or even getting proper cover and proper backup that you can rely upon at the same level of performance as the rest of the players on screen is expensive. So is this a priority for us to upgrade for if McGregor you know, was to stay fit for the full year and you could relatively forecast that's a, quite a safe thing. That, you know, He's not an injury prone player, he's not get bad um, disciplinary records where he gets suspended for matches on end potentially or anything like that then I probably think this is the last priority and I think it is in right order in terms of how the links have went. I think left back, centre back and then defensive mid. Above and beyond that, we've got two to each position, we've got a really strong youth academy as well and I think the team's in fantastic shape to go on and compete on four fronts next year and really have a great season and really go on and attack it and you know improve upon this season's success. I hope you've enjoyed this one guys. Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Who would be a good backup ball winning midfielder for Celtic all the Sorvair scouts and managers out there across the world let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below don't forget to like subscribe and share and retweet and all that good stuff guys stay out of trouble and I'll catch you on the next one take care bye bye Let's get into all the giveaway stuff before I let you go. I'm still doing monthly giveaways and I'm making it easier to enter. If you want to be entered to win this month's prize or any future giveaways here at the channel, all the same rules will always apply. Hit the subscribe button, you need to be a subscriber to enter, then leave a comment down below. Each month, a random comment from a random video will be selected as the winner, so the more videos you leave a comment on, the better the chance you've got of winning any of my giveaways. All the winners are announced at the end of videos the same way as we're doing here. The best way to keep up with the content has always been to hit the notification bell with all notifications turned on. As always guys, if you've enjoyed the video today, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button. On screen there now is some other stuff that I've made that YouTube thinks you might enjoy. Stay out of trouble and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye bye.